woman is on TV and she is split naked. Now, how many of you know that the old man in us, if you're a man and you've got the old man in you, likes that? Let's be honest. Don't lie to me. I've been around too long, man. Come on, raise your hands. I'm on. Be honest. God's, yeah, you do. That's the way you were created. You were created to pursue, to go after it. But now you become a Christian. Now, I'm looking at this thing. You know, I'm trying to find a button, okay? You know, that little thing you have in your hand. What do you call that little digit thing? Is that a remote? I was wondering what that was. I got to start using that, you know? And I was looking at that, and, and the Holy Ghost was talking, but I wasn't paying no attention. I'm, you know, and Susan walks in the room, and my thumb found that button just like that. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost and my wife, because men, women, the men need help. Come on now. Of course, the, you know, the women, they got, you know, they just perfect. Okay. But the men need help. <laughs> <coughs> We'll, we'll deal with that next week. With the, but, but isn't that, we, men, we need help. And I thank God that, we, that I have learned to say no to all ungodliness by his grace and mercy. And I thank you that when I'm all alone, or if I'm out in public, I'm not like a lizard. You know, the lizards change colors. You ever notice that? If they're around green stuff, they turn green. If they're around brown stuff, they turn brown. You know, I've been like that a few times in my life, but not no more. Because I have learned, and the Holy Spirit has dealt with me in such, such deep measure that when I look at that stuff that I used to do, I almost want to throw up. Seriously, I, I'm being honest. You're just sick of that. And you say, ah, because you have found a new way of living. You have tapped onto the vine. You are drawing from Jesus Christ through his spirit now. And you light up on the inside and you're free at last. You're free at last. So I, I just want to paint that picture. I, uh, let's go ahead and start in the scriptures here now. And I want you to turn to, if you will, 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's start with verse 18. We can get it on the board on the Amplified Bible. And I want to ask a question, why Christ died for us? Number one, I want to say, to bring us to God. Everybody say, to bring us to God. Now let's read this in the Amplified. Okay, are we ready? For Christ the Messiah himself died for, the, for sins once for all. He don't have to repeat it anymore. Once and for all, any sin that we've done in the past, the present, or the future, it's been dealt with by the death of Jesus Christ, the righteous for the unrighteous. All right, he's the righteous, we were the unrighteous. The just for the unjust. He was the just, we were the unjust. The innocent for the guilty. He was innocent, we were guilty. Notice this, that he might bring us to God. Everybody say that. He might bring us to God. Okay, in his human body, he was put to death, but he was made alive in the spirit. Now, I want you to take that, that, that he might bring us to God, that he might bring us to God. He died on that cross, that he might bring us to God. We were separated from God by the Adam's sin and our sins. Christ died that he might bring us to his father. Now I want to bring this thing down on a human level. I've been picking on Charles and, and Willie too long. <laughs> Who would have brave souls in here? Oh, here's a brave soul. I, could look, I, I looked at his eyes and I could see bravery. Yeah, All right. All right. Now, would you stand right over there? Uh, let's see if I can find another brave soul in here. Uh, Scott back there. I love it. I got you, Scott. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday at the, at the uh, uh, pastor's uh, appreciation, he, he, was, he was doing this here. And I thought that was just yeah. to Charles, you know. Yeah, there they go. Let's do it again. Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> I love that. Oh, you're the father. Okay. You're the father. You stand right there. That's us. Okay. And I want to say this, too. We had a blast yesterday 
at the pastor's appreciation. And we want you to know uh, Willie and Martha and, and uh, Linda, Frank and Linda and uh, all the people that had something to do with that because the Bible says when one is honored, we're all honored. And I think one of the hardest things for me to do is to receive. But I told Susan, I just die and receive because we give, we're givers, but we're learning to receive. But see, he represents us. And I need one other brave soul. Look, I'm looking at Roy, and Roy said, please, Lord, not me to die. Well, I didn't say that. All right, there we go. All right, this is Jesus right here. You stand right over here, Jesus. And, and, okay, now, who, who, is, who is this guy? This is us. There's Jesus. There's the Father. The Father loves us. But the Father can't come to us. He's holy, perfect in every respect, but he loves us. And here we are in sin, doing our own thing, living like we want to live, planning our lives like we're going to live forever. What a mistake that is. But see, he's blind. He's lost. He's separated from the Father. And the Father, listen to this, the person that's in the light always reaches out to the person that's in the darkness. Total darkness, total separated from the Father. So the Father says, son, come over here. The Father says to the Son, the Holy Spirit and me have been talking, and you the man. I want you to go down there. I want you to get him. Not yet. <laughs> We've got to milk this thing a little bit. <coughs> I want people to see the picture. And, and that's Jesus. And the Father says to Jesus, but you're going to go down there and, you, and we're going to give you a body just like the, all the folks down there that we created. The God, okay, you created and the Holy Ghost created and you're going to go down and you're going to have to die and pay for his sins. You're the just, but he's the unjust. You're the innocent, but he's the guilty. You're the righteous, but he's the unrighteous. So the innocent, the just, and the righteous is going to go down and die for the unjust, the guilty. He is guilty. If he dies in that state, he's going to bust hell wide open. But you are going to be his savior. And you're going to pay the price to redeem him. You're going to shed your blood and redeem him back to the father. Because the father loves him so much. Now, you're going to have to die on a cross. And it's going to be hard. And you're going to have to think it not... You're, you're going to have to not... Take your righteous place that you're equal with the Father. And you're going to have to humble yourself unto death to bring him back to the Father. And Jesus said, but Father, I love him too. And I love you, Father. And I will be obedient. And what you ask me to do, I will do. So you come down and you're born in a manger as a little baby. I just think he's cute. <laughs> You're not going to be born in a hospital or a palace. You're really going to be born in a cave. And uh, son, I hate to tell you, but it's going to smell like sheep. <laughs> but after all, you are the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So don't let the smell of the place bother you too much. And you're going to grow up, and nobody's going to know much about you for 30 years. Now, when you were 12 years old, you're going to go to the temple, and you're going to confound the wise men. But after that, 30 years, you're going to be, you're going to be out of sight. John the Baptist. 
He's, he's got what John the Baptist, how do you like this? He's got one message. Mm-hmm. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Next, next Sunday. <laughs> next, you know, John the Baptist did not change his message. Next Sunday comes, you come in. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, two Sundays, I'm sure the next Sunday will be different. No. <laughs> Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's the only message he knew. John the Baptist, that's what he preached. Here comes John. Stand right there. We don't know who this guy is. He's been out of sight for 30 years. There's one person in the crowd that's down at the River Jordan baptizing people. And all of a sudden, John the Baptist looks up. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Nobody knew who he was. All these things Mary hid in her heart. Nobody really understood. But God, through a prophet, had that prophet to speak and point out, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He doesn't have any fellowship with the Father. He's in darkness. Where are you going, John? <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you encouraging news. Your ministry must decrease. Mm. You've pointed him out, and he must increase. You can sit down. (laughs) He lost his head. In heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Really, Lord, I was really, I didn't like this beard I had. And, it, and that camel, that camel skin was really itching me, you know. And that honey and, and, those, and, those, and those grasshoppers, I still got one in my tooth right now. <laughs> the only thing, you know, John wasn't married, but, you know, if he was, she'd have to, you'd have to cook grasshoppers yeah. and honey. <laughs> And all you'd hear out of him every day, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now he, John the Baptist, has identified, but now remember, he's coming, yes, to die on the cross for our sins. He's going to shed his blood that we might have eternal life. But he wants to bring us to the Father. Because the Father wants to have fellowship with us. And here's, we're going to hold your positions. Once that trans... Let me tr- change the word. Once that happens into our lives, we don't know the significance of it yet to, 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 be, to be reconciled back to the Father. When you're in the presence of God, His presence becomes so precious to you. Now, I'm going to say something here now. As long as other things are more precious to us, we're going to go after those things that are so precious to us. But little by little, God cuts them. And there's only one thing left. That's the Son who has come to bring us to the Father, but we cannot go to the Father in our condition because of the Adam's sin, we inherited that sin plus our sins. So he had to pay the price. He paid a debt. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe. And we owed a debt that we could not pay. We are helpless. We are hopeless. No amount of works, no amount of trying to keep the law of God can save us because if you offend at one point, you're guilty of them all. That doesn't mean the law is bad. The law is good. The problem is in us. So he comes. He dies on the cross. He sheds his blood. One day... There's a man like Bob Tilton preaching. And he says something like this. 
Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be safe. For there is no way to the Father except through the Son. And the Son says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man goes to the Father except through the Son. And he hears that. And the Holy Spirit comes and begins to work on this man. Mom, that's at home. She's praying her heart out for this young man. At a time she thinks, God, do you hear me? He's in the world. He's separated from the Father. Sin has separated him from the Son. And that mother prays year after year, year after year. She's a righteous soul. And the Bible says that the prayers of a righteous man and a righteous woman the Lord hears it. The ears of God, the Father, are attentive to that mother's prayer. And God the Father sends the Holy Ghost and convicts him. And he sees Jesus. And he comes to Jesus and receives Jesus as his Lord and Savior and Master. And Jesus <laughs> takes... <laughs> All right. And now Jesus takes him to the Father. Take him to the Father. And Father, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, gentlemen. But the work was done. The work was done at the cross. And, and, and the breaking away of this old world system and the breaking away of, of all the desires and jealousies and, and, and misunderstandings and the, and the mind hasn't been renewed yet. Uh, God says, come to church now and I have people in the church that will teach you how to walk godly. But you must come. You must be a good student. I want you to meet together, to be edified, to learn the Word of God. I've put teachers and given them gifts to teach my people how to walk. But you must come. You must get involved in Sunday school. You must get involved and realize that you are a part of the one body of Christ now. There's not two bodies on the earth. There's only one body, and that's the body of Jesus Christ. And every born-again Christian is a member of that one body. Now, we all meet at different geographical locations. And I know some denominations think that they're the only ones, and we'll just keep loving them and blessing them. But the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that means you have become a child of God through faith in what Christ did on the cross for you, period. It is finished. It is done. Now, here's where most Christians get mixed up. You can't be no more saved than you are right now. If you've truly repented, if you have truly accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can't get no more justified, you can't get no more sanctified than you are right now, even though I know there is a process of sanctification. He has sanctified us, he is sanctifying us, and he shall sanctify us. He has delivered us, he shall deliver us, and yet he shall deliver us. But as far as God's concerned, you are perfect in Jesus Christ. When he sees you, he sees you perfect. How many, have you ever seen parents that have young kids and they look at you and they say, he's the perfect child? And of course, you know different. But to that parent, he's perfect. Not many of you in here, okay, I'm, I'm talking to the wrong crowd. <clears throat> anyway, but we, are, we have been made perfect in the eyes of God through what Christ did for us. Now, here's where the big problem is. Learning to walk in the Spirit. Learning to hear the Father's voice. Learning not to follow after our own desires but to follow after the Holy Spirit according to the Word of God. That's really where the big problem is in the church today. And we all have to learn that. Um, Jonathan, can you want to be an example here this morning? Or do you feel up to it? You want to come up here? 
Okay. Now, Jonathan here, I, I've known him when he was born, and he wasn't walking. He was born, and he was perfect at that stage. But he had to learn to walk. Now he runs. He, he, I mean, he can run. He's strong. You feel those muscles? Listen, they don't even squeak. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Woo, ain't going to mess with that boy. Uh, but see, he's learning to grow up, but he has a teacher. He don't just run off and just play all day long and never come home and never obey his uh, mother. She has the responsibility of teaching him to, to walk. Now, when he fell, she didn't get the belt and beat him. She, she said, come on, son, we go up again. You, did some of you remember when your kids first, you know, and then all of a, you can sit down, John, and I, I love this, and they finally get up there and they do, like they're doing the boogie-woogie, you know, and, you, and you're there like there, you know, and, and they go. And, and those legs are just like, hey, 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 okay. But isn't that true? You didn't beat them, and they would fall, and you'd help them back up. That's what we as the church are doing, helping you how to walk, how to love each other, how to, to, to prefer others over yourself. See, that's not natural. That's not natural to go to second mile. Yeah, I'll go to second mile. I'll show him what I got here. He'll go two miles. I'll put him four miles down the road. See, you have to learn not to do that. It's really simple. If you've trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're born again. If you truly trusted him for your salvation, you can't get no more born again. He's born, but he has to learn how to live as a young boy. And as he grows and matures, some of the things that he does now, when he gets 15 and 20 years old, he won't do no more because he's grown into a maturity. But at, at, at seven years old, he still loves to play in mud. Is that right, Jonathan? A little mud every once in a while? Okay. <clears throat> Maybe he's grown out of that. How many in here likes to play in mud? Let me see your hand. One, two, three, four. You'll grow. You'll grow up. <laughs> in the meantime, we'll still be patient with you because you're going to have to learn not to play in the mud, walk in the house, and track the house all up, Okay. But most of the people learn, you learn not to, but at that age, and see, that's where us mature Christians have to hold steady, don't lose your hair. That's how you lost it, huh? Just hold steady. Life is, a, is an experience of growing, maturing, developing. Susan could tell you a few habits that I used to have when we first got married. You want to hear some of them? Hmm? I'll tell mine if you tell me yours. <laughs> how many picked your nose at the table? Let's see your hands. I'm often saying, how do you get out of there if you can't, can't pick your nose, you know? But you know, I don't do that no more. Have you, have, you, have you seen that? Have you noticed my head back here is a little sort of like it's, you know, you see that? I told you not to do that no more, son. Don't do that no more, honey. Oh, I like this. Do it again. Boing, boing. You can get happy. Boing, boing. Love me. That's my sense of humor coming out. But you know what I'm talking about. It's a gross. I don't want you to be discouraged. I want you to realize, but, but, but apply yourself. Spend time in the Word. Spend time with God. And just walk around your yard and, and meditate on the Lord and think on the Lord and the goodness of God, how good he is. The Holy Spirit, he will cause you to grow. He will open up your understanding. He will illuminate your spirit. You'll see things, and most of you already know this, but you see things you've never seen before because the Holy Spirit is operating in your life and he's showing you how to be kind. He's showing you you don't have to be number one. Uh, in fact, Jesus set the example. He humbled himself and went all the way down and God lifted him all the way up and seated him at the highest place right beside the Father. And you, amen, you learn those things. 
I don't have to be first anymore, do I, honey? But she is so gracious, she wants me to be first. It is sheer pleasure in her to bless me. I can say something. Boy, I like to have some good pork chops. The next day, I got pork chops on my table. So some of you don't understand that yet. And that's okay. We're going to love you and help you to come out of the carnality into the things of the Spirit. And then you will see that it is more blessed to what? To give than to receive. I remember, and I'm going to knock off here a little bit. You're going to leave by 3 o'clock. I'm a man of my word. By 3 o'clock, you'll be out of here. Okay. There's a girl say, phew, I thought, she, I thought he was going to say 6 o'clock. <coughs> but I'm, I'm giving you a little tidbits of some things, and I'm hoping you're sucking it in. It's spirit to honor Charles over myself is sheer pleasure. I'm, I'm serious. To honor Rick or Frank, that I might become, like John the Baptist, I might become less. I must decrease as you all increase. Anybody listening? See, see now you're walking into spirit. It, it's not about me no more. It's about those that I love. It's about the body of Christ. It's about my children. It's about my grandchildren. You see, I belong to God. And I'm secure enough to know that God's going to take care of me because he promised me in his word that he would. And all that, in, that insecurity in you finally melts out and you can be blessed when other people are blessed. I want to share this experience, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to let you go. Years ago, I had an assistant, many years ago. And um, this time, at this time, I was not receiving a salary. I pastored the Shield of Faith for 20 years without a salary. I'm not bragging, not complaining. I'm just sharing my testimony, okay? Simple and clear. And I had this assistant, and I put him on a salary, and I wasn't getting a salary. And they had, uh, he'd done good for a while, and a couple women wanted to uh, honor him, and it was his birthday. So they had this big party for my assistant, and they invited me, and we all went to the party. And he was honored, and they bought new suits for him. They gave him a big gift of money. And he's the assistant, and I'm the, the um, senior. But I want to tell you something. God had done a work in me that I could rejoice. Anybody listening? I could rejoice that my brother was being honored. My assistant. And you know, sometimes we find ourselves like the oldest brother in the story of the prodigal son? How many remembers that story? How many of you know the oldest brother needed an overhaul? <laughs> son, don't you understand? My son, your brother was lost, but now he's found. And it's only right to have a festival, to rejoice. I've always had you. Everything I have is yours. See, the oldest son had not come into that relationship with the father that he could feel secure, knowing that everything that the father had was his already but he didn't know how to enjoy it. All he could do was complain to the father, this son of yours, who blew your, his inheritance 
has come back and look what you've done. Until you can come to that place to be able to rejoice and understand and be so secure in the Father's love, there will be a day if you can walk in the Spirit, God will honor you. God will honor you for what you have done and rewards you. Don't ever fear that God has left you out. He has not. He has great things for every one of his children, but he wants his children to learn how to walk with one another, how to reach out into the world and share your testimony, how you were brought to the Father by the saving grace that came through Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, sometimes we feel like nobody notices us, but I'm here to tell you, he sees your labor, and your labor is not in vain, and you will be rewarded. And even though at times you think like you're never noticed, but the Father always sees where his children are at. And he will be the one that will reward you with eternal rewards. But in the meantime, he wants us to love one another, prefer others over ourselves, give Christ the glory that, he, that he's deserved, know that the Son has brought us back to the Father, and now we can come to the throne of God with boldness and with confidence in time of need. You never have to run from the Father. Always run to Him. And He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the wisdom to walk through every trial that ever will ever have to face. Let's pray. Father,